Hello, everyone. Welcome to another video. Uh, before we begin, I just like to remind everyone that I have a Patreon. Um, and I would say at least 50% of the content that I'm now putting out is for patrons only. So um, yeah, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron. Okay, so let's get right into it. So today we're going to be covering the topic of imminence. Um, now the concept of imminence simply uh, ref uh, simply means from the inside. Um, uh, this is uh, the antonym of imminence would be transcendence. Transcendence is, of course, from the outside. You're taking a transcendent uh, position um, and looking upon something instead of being from within the something and uh, having an imminent perspective on it. So imminent means from the inside. Transcendence means from the outside. So I wanted to talk uh, a bit about uh, what an imminent perspective is and what it entails to have an imminent perspective. And then I'm going to connect this to some Lacanian and Hegelian stuff and also talk about the death of God and Descartes and subjectivity. So it's kind of going to be all over the place, but um, I just want to use uh, as many examples and uh, as I can just to try and get across uh, what this idea of imminence actually entails. So um, first, let's just begin with reality. Let's just talk about us in reality and how we can conceptualize reality as finite beings. But let's do it from a purely imminent perspective. Say we have reality here, and let's just say I'm inside of it. That's, that's just for the example. I am inside reality as a finite, self-enclosed thing. So the only reason why we know that this is finite and self-enclosed is because I'm here and you're here and you're looking upon it, right? However, how would that, um, what would reality look like from the imminent perspective from within? So let's try and imagine that you are on the inside and you, um, you are part of reality. You could not constitute reality as self-enclosed as a self-enclosed consistent totality from the inside, precisely because if you, the only way to do so is from the outside. You need to be on the outside looking upon reality to perceive it as a self-enclosed totality. But um, as, as, as I just said, from the imminent perspective, it's impossible to perform that operation. You would have to step on your own shoulders, to step outside of reality and look upon it and constitute it as a self-enclosed totality. But that is precisely what you cannot do from within reality. So when someone like Slavoj Žižek says that reality is non-all, what he's saying there is that um, there is a sort of radical imminence. There is no outside perspective from which we could perform a totalizing act of constituting reality as a whole. And for therefore, reality is always, um, from our perspective, always uh, is always known all. It's always inconsistent, unable to be a fully self-enclosed totality. So this outside perspective, which would constitute reality as whole, this is what um, Slavoj Žižek and Jacques Lacan and... Um, a bunch of other people since Lacan refer to as the big other. The big other would constitute that outside um, figure, um, which is able to uh, con constitute reality as self-enclosed, as a totality. But of course, for Lacan, for Zizek, for most modern philosophers, there is no big other. There's no actual God, and there's no, and the big other for them is just a virtual proje projection, sort of, it's a created by subjects themselves, but doesn't actually exist. So for Lacan, there is no big other, meaning there is no outside figure who could constitute reality as whole. And that's why for all of these thinkers, Lacan, Zizek, um, they would, uh, Zizek would argue even Hegel, um, reality itself is always non-all. It's inconsistent precisely because there is no ability for the subject to um, take a sort of step back and have an absolute knowing uh, in the naive understanding of it, like an absolute knowing which sees all of reality, which brings all of reality into, uh, for Hegel, what would be the idea. 
Now, precisely for Hegel, the idea is not all, because what is uh, the Hegelian method fundamentally? It is an imminent critique. It's moving, it's not taking outside terms and applying them as some sort of standard of truth. Rather, we see, we move from the pure concept of being, which negates itself into nothing, which of course, um, then it becomes, uh, then we move to becoming. Now, um, this is an example of a, pu a purely imminent logical development because we're not like uh, we're not taking an outside standard whether that be any sort of first principle or god or anything like that we're purely moving uh taking the idea and developing it developing it allowing its own internal logic to develop and this is why zizek will argue in the sublime object of ideology that uh, re, uh the idea for hegel is non-all absolute knowing is the reconciliation with the non-all of reality. It's not a, um, for Zizek at least, it's not a taking a step back and constituting reality as a whole. This is precisely the opposite of what, according to Zizek, Hegel's philosophy is, Hegel's understanding of absolute knowing. Um, so I recently made a Patreon video on uh, Zizek's uh, understanding of the idea. Uh, it's from the preface to the sublime object of ideology. So yeah, be, if you would like to see that video, uh, please consider becoming a patron. Uh, so yeah, so uh, let's just recap quickly what we've talked about so far. Um, imminence means from within, it's opposed to transcendent, which is from outside. From the imminent perspective, reality or any field cannot be closed. It can't be made into a totality because this act of totalization requires a stepping out from the field and uh, performing this act of totalization uh, from an ex external perspective. Uh, for Hegel, uh, the idea is precisely non-all because there is no standard outside of the idea from which truth can be measured. The idea is its own self-development of its own truth, of its own logic. Um, now, this is where we would, uh, now, we're, now we're going to uh, move on to talk very briefly about the death of God. Now, the death of God is precisely this sort of um, move from transcendence where we have the idea of God to imminence. And um, it's no... It's no coincidence that the first uh, truly modern philosopher, according to uh, most people, uh, is Descartes, who confronted the um, most radical form of imminence, which is the subject itself, the cogito. Uh, now, the the subject is one of these things, according to Zizek Hegel Lacan, who is stuck within its own finite reality. And because it can never take a step back and step on its own shoulders to constitute itself as whole, as a totality, the subject itself is always non-all, antagonistic, finite, uh, self, self-fractured, whatever, you, however you want to put it, the subject is precisely one of those beings who in a godless world, in a world without any big other, any figure of transcendence, the subject is always um, antagonistic, always non-all, uh, precisely because it is that imminent perspective. It, it is fundamentally, uh, any perspective the subject has is from within it. It's from it itself. So it can't perform a fully closed loop of constituting itself as a fully consistent being. So Descartes, this is precisely why the only way Descartes could uh, firmly ground truth and our very being was by appealing to God. And for Descartes, this was his big achievement. He showed he showed just from the subject that we needed God. But really, um, what someone like Zizek would argue is that um, all Descartes is doing is positing a notion of the big other um, who is able to... Um, after the confrontation with the abyss of subjectivity, with the cogito, we have to have this projection. Descartes had to have the projection of God, this idea of God, who is able to maintain the consistency of reality after we confront this, the cogito. The only way we can um, maintain this idea of a uh, perfect, transcendent, um, totalized whole truth, um, the only way you can have that is with God because the subject itself cannot be the standard of truth, um, at least in the sense of a firmly grounded whole. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, uh, the, all I have to say for today. Um, again, we talked about imminence um, and its consequences, what that means for uh, the notion of truth uh, and the subject. And uh, we just ended talking about Descartes and how he needed this notion of God to
uh, ground and uh, ground truth and maintain the consistency of reality. I uh, hope you you got something out of it. I'm sorry about the <laughs> squeaking in the chair. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching again. Um, I'll see you next time and may God bless you all.